Hi guys, my name is Shoni. I'm a YouTuber and a presenter. Um, I'm Lucy. I'm currently training to be a personal trainer and I'm also a presenter. Um, I'm Rachel and I'm also a presenter and I'm a dancer, YouTuber, uh, makeup artist. <laughs> and I'm Shinadu, also known as Shins, a uh, current presenter and also a product ambassador for Global Brand Adidas. Um, with, they say you have an example of confidence, whatever. I feel like whatever field you want to do, I feel like the best way to build your confidence through networking mm -hmm. um, is through obviously speaking to other people and um, kind of getting an insight of how they their approach is. And from there, you can actually apply it to yourself and build your confidence from there. Definitely. Um, okay. So um, I would definitely say networking, no matter what field you are in. You, you have to network in order to build because you build confidence. You build confidence, well, build like build with like connections or whatever. That person can then praise you and uplift you in that sense, and um, obviously help you in the areas that you feel like you're lacking or in, like insecure with. So um, you networking can someone can actually fill that void for you. So um, yeah, your network is your network. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. Yeah. No, I agree, and I think it's always quite good to have someone that's like a mentor, maybe just slightly older than yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. To guide you always helps. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Definitely. Um, just quickly, I was Go watching ahead. a video by Tyler the other day and he was saying how you should split your time in between, in thirds. So 33% of your time should be with someone who is less experienced than you, so you can teach them. Okay. And the other 33% of your time should be with someone who is doing the same job for you and level so that you can feed off of them and learn from them. Okay. And then the other 33% of your time should be with someone who yeah. has 10 years plus experience mm -hmm. or is just very experienced so you can learn from them. No, I can 100% agree with that without even realising I think I've kind of accomplished that because of the sole intention of me wanting to gain experience and again networking it was having different individuals whether they had less equal or higher experience than my own I knew that I was learning something from each one of them in that same way um, again because this is mainly for the younger generation uh, could each of you potentially explain the best way that you networked through your experience? Because for me, it was always, anytime I was working, doing a shoot with the brands or um, just applying a job itself, anytime I was there, I'd always speak to the higher employer or whichever, and always ask for opportunities. Anywhere I go, regardless of where it is, I ask for opportunities. Is that something similar to you guys as well, where you always look for an opportunity? Ask them what they do, stay in contact with people, and then you know maybe you just write them for projects with them and stuff. Um, ask your friends to introduce you to other people. Um, and I just literally I DM people all the time. Yeah. And I just be like, hey, blah blah, blah tell them what I do, they tell um, me what they do, and um, yeah, I think so many young people are scared. To, exactly. Yeah, so many people are scared to just message someone. It's just like just say hello. Exactly. Please. Especially London is so small. Everyone's gonna know everyone there. In some way. Yeah. Um, I, my approach, I literally just used to, I didn't realise it was a, a, a form of networking. Um, I didn't use to classify it as networking, obviously. Um, of course, yeah. For example, if I was like um, a show or whatever, I would like, say, example, like compliment someone or whatever and then kind of like embrace their creative or what they're doing. And um, from there, we kind of share our interests and from there, we kind of like find out what they're doing and from there, it kind of. Build builds up, so, yeah, 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 yeah it stems up to like that person might know that person might refer that person to, so kind of like giving that friendly approach without knowing that it's business like without knowing it's um like networking because mm -hmm. I didn't really classify it as networking when I was in a yeah, younger yeah. age if that makes sense so from there I usually just like from compliments to like just building like a friendship or building that kind of relationship it doesn't necessarily have to be a friendship but building that relationship with someone that can actually um like empower you in terms of like confidence as well and um, you go referring that person to this person and from there it kind of builds up your confidence and yeah. And, and, like, yeah, I feel like all my friends will be like, why are you message with people that's so proud? But it's like, why is it proud? Like, it's a compliment to the person anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, mm. and everyone likes to give advice. Like, so, I don't think you should be afraid to kind of just ask.
Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid to ask and also help other people and they'll help you. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna bring that back up back up. So you literally like search up any free event and just go there and you speak yeah, to it's, anyone it's, and everyone. Okay. Um, anything to do with media or business. I know there's a lot of business networking events. I love going to events by myself. Sick. Hey guys. It's, it's your freedom, <laughs> you be yourself. Sick. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, in, in, in regards to that then, so how important is it for you three and for the people who may watch this to really build that connection? like? in that working environment does it and also with your way of as we explained and realizing what the networking is has that also been a positive effect to each of your confidence levels as well um so this time last year i was in university and i hadn't started a youtube channel and right now um i work full time for the charity as a presenter and i'm a youtuber and i'm starting an online shop in the next couple weeks mm. and I say my confidence is out there and it's been less than a year so anything is possible um, but oh my gosh I'm so sorry but I forgot the question <laughs> <laughs> Um, in terms of your confidence level, how important is it to build the connections that you have in your uh, environment? Okay, yeah, so what I was going to say is literally anything is possible. Mm. Um, so I started my journey less than a year ago and my life has completely transformed. And I, I was in London and I didn't know anyone and now I have some, I've got some names on my phone. <laughs> like I've got some people, you know, some valuable valuable assets and yeah. connections that mm -hmm. have benefited you. That's amazing. How about um, you two? Um, with me, I've always been a confident person. Mm -hmm. like, um, and I've always had connections. Mm -hmm. Because obviously with dancing and because I've got people that mentor that are in the industry itself. Of course. For example, the music industry or um, dancing. But then um, in terms of like, um, obviously the networking, um, it has built up my confidence in terms of like, because obviously I study fashion, I do fashion. And I didn't... I've always had confidence in fashion, but not as not it's nowhere near in par with, say, example, dancing. And that being said, uh, with that being said, obviously, like networking, I was always someone that just didn't really. I wouldn't say I didn't really like to approach random people for like. Yeah. I don't. With me, I've always been the person I didn't feel like I. I didn't want to. As you know, before I. Was, I didn't want to feel like I'm using someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that yeah, sense, yeah. so Absolutely. I've always been someone that's like, okay, if they don't. If I obviously I can compliment or whatever, that's that's it. But I don't want to ask them for into the business opportunities or whatever. Mm. And being said, being said that, oh, I realise that it's not. You have to just go for it because if you wait, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be a person that regrets and thinks, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. Because it's happened a few times where I've literally missed opportunities because of confidence. Not even confidence, but just being shy mm. to approach someone in mm. a sense. And I feel like um, sometimes you have to just go for it. And the worst you can get is a no. That's yeah. it. That's so literally it. Exactly. I, I think that's one of the biggest things that, um, especially me being an example of it, just taking that into consideration that there's no harsh in putting yourself forward for something that you really want to do mm. and all you receive is a no. I mean, it, again, it does relate to confidence. How, how important do you feel is it's um, for the younger generation to when they do approach that's something that they want and they do receive a no. Because I can only presume, because each of you have now reached that confidence level, you can be the presenters that you are. How important do you feel is if the younger generation understands that the confidence level that they have, it's, it's key to be confident in your lifestyle, but also even if it's a no, still just continue on. Because I feel it's just the younger people, when they get a no, it, it drops, like it, it's a big hit to the chest. Mm -hmm. I was a very big example of that. If I got a no from a job interview, football, my mom, like whatever it was, it, it would hit me right in the chest. So yeah. for each of you, would you think that when it's a no, and like you, you just think it's important to just strive forward and just keep going no matter what? 100%. I feel like our generation is so bad, like we want instant like gratification, like we want, you know, like with the social media again, it's like, Everyone just wants to be at the end goal immediately. When it takes so long, it takes a really long time, and that's fine. Mm. You should enjoy the journey. Like, enjoy it. No, it doesn't matter. Like, it's good to build yourself up. Like, you need. I don't know. Because yeah. then, when you get to the end, you're like, I worked for this, and this is where I am. That's the greatest satisfaction. I feel. Exactly. That's the greatest satisfaction. I feel like we empower that the word no. I feel like we were the ones that kind of like 
you know what I mean? Like make it seem as if it's like a big, like a, a big thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, with, I, I feel like with um, social media, for example, a lot of people, say example, successful people, they forget to mention the hard work, the hard ship that they've done and they don't really tell people the, the whole process of it so a lot of people are blindsided to think okay they got it easy when they clearly didn't and mm -hmm. a lot of especially younger generations are blind to it because obviously we've grown up without social media when we were younger and obviously we were able to jam me experience that the nose and having to go through ourselves and jam me but whereas mm -hmm. like are people that's like blindsided and they have easy access to certain things mm -hmm. because of social media they feel like a lot of people forget to mention that there is trials and errors, and there is they're gonna be no's, but they forget to mention that to people. So a lot of young people are blind to thinking, okay, they got it easy, so how come I didn't get it easy? And that kind of knocks down someone's confidence because a lot of people think, well, they do try, it's not actually as easy as they think. It's not as easy. Absolutely. It's yeah. not, it's not, it's to do with all image, to be fair, it's yeah. like no one wants to show their faults, and no one wants to show that it's like what, like the bad things, they all just want to show the good things. A lot of people, I think there needs to be a more of an awareness that there are hardships, there are a lot of things that doesn't go well. A lot of, people that's in the industry that's far now, they took a lot of no's, mm -hmm. they had a lot of no's, so um, yeah, they need to, I feel like they need to be more awareness that, yeah, there was a lot of no's. So I think mm -hmm. that everything honestly happens for a reason, so if you do get a no, then it's just, it wasn't meant for you, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's a greater part, and um, you shouldn't measure your success as someone else's, because yours might take five years, but then you might be a lot, or I, obviously everyone, like, they classify success differently. Of course, yes. Different. But in terms of money, your success might be far greater than someone else's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you still shouldn't compare your struggle mm -hmm. and your, or your journey to anyone else's. You just have to have faith in your own. So you mentioned uh, the key word that I'm going to touch on, money. Do you think that money has always been a confidence booster to, to a lot of the young or even anyone in, in general? Yeah, yeah. Like I, um, some of my old friends, I like to give myself a very small amount, but in the past, um, some of my old friends, they would just focus on get rich quick schemes and not about sustainability mm -hmm. and having, <clears throat> actually progressing their life and actually becoming a better person. Mm -hmm. I think that in life, if your intention is pure and um, it's not all about yourself and you actually want to help other people, then you're more likely to have success. Where I feel yeah, I feel like I feel like confidence, money can can impact someone's confidence mm -hmm. in a sense where a lot of people. I feel like nowadays people are more materialistic than mm -hmm. how it was back in the day. Definitely. And I feel like nowadays, especially social media, mm -hmm. that a lot of people are portraying that image that they yeah. Like, it's almost like they're copying and pasting what someone else is exactly. doing. Exactly. I want to do the same. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that that can obviously impact someone because obviously they feel like um, obviously money is easy access. Um, so they feel like, hey, if I have money, then people respect me more. And I feel like people are forgetting that money is just a piece of paper. Money is just coins. Do you know what I mean? Money, just, it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people feel like use that as a way of, of worth, self-worth and self-respect, really. Mm -hmm. And yeah, money, obviously money can, it does help. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you can't rely on money. Because if, if you're relying on money, then you're never going to be happy. You know, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? If you're always thinking about money, then... What's the purpose? Exactly. I feel like everyone nowadays is like they think happiness is something that you can achieve once you get to a certain place and actually like you should just be happy with what you are now. You that's exactly, exactly yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I prefer to have influence than money. I mean I still want money. Yeah, <laughs> but, of course. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I prefer to have influence and to actually be able to impact and help young people mm -hmm. rather than just have money because I think you can you can make a cake and someone can come along and steal the cake and have the recipe, mm -hmm. so yeah. you, can build, you can make a thousand cakes after that. So yeah. you really need to just focus, young people need to focus on training themselves and learning and yeah, because you can just lose all your money overnight, anything that matters. So it's almost as if don't be so so restricted or stuck on that one thing that can almost ruin you. Be yourself in the best way you can be. Exactly. And I've got a mention because I'm curious to know now, do any of you have any like influencers or people that have influenced you to the current industries that you work in? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe my Jama mm -hmm. or Reggie Yates I really love as well. Okay. I think they're really good presenters. Um, Mm -hmm. um, myself, I would probably say my drama, I look up to her, uh, Oprah. Nice. Gotta love Oprah. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Michelle Obama, um, Anthony Jimmy. 
I'll probably say mine, uh, Warren Gibson. Um, like she just has a beautiful voice. Um, and um, it's, it's, she's really confident and she wears the confidence. Like if you have confidence, you can have as much, if you have confidence, people respect you. Yeah. And I love her confidence because she doesn't care. Like she's just, and people respect her for that. And you being confident, can, like, can change someone's atmosphere. Mm-hmm. It can change the way people actually perceive and people actually approach you. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably say that. I think mine would be, and it's going to be cliche because obviously it guys, but Poet and David Vujanic, they have been easy, the biggest influences for me solely because I've almost studied and watched their journey yeah. from being individual entertainers to now being a, a duo that can almost be inseparable, mm-hmm. but they can still do their own thing as individuals. Mm-hmm. And I look up to them so much solely because everything that they both do in, in, this, in all the industries that they're a part of, especially poet, music, fashion, sports, food, sports, politics, entertainment, both of them entertainment even. It's as if you've actually got two different individuals that you can really pick anything from and learn so much from and still be yourself in that process. Of. So I definitely think those two are key influences for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Make sure you've subscribed to the YouTube channel by hitting the button right here. It's been your boy Chins. Make sure you follow me on Instagram too, officialchins55. And make sure you like, comment, and share. See you guys soon.